Have you ever wanted to make epic mob versus mob battles but didn't know how? Well today, I'm going to show you just that. So let's go ahead and get started. As you can see, I have a standard setup for what I use for my mob battles, but it looks a lot more complicated and scary than it actually is, and we will go through it bit by bit, and I will show you exactly what each thing does. First things first though, really, you don't need any of this to actually get started. First thing you'll need to do is actually install the mob battle mod, link for it is down in the description. But as you can see, it adds a bunch of new things, and yes, this mod is necessary to make the mobs actually want to battle each other. So as you can see, it adds quite a few things, and if we were to take, for instance, um, the mob Enrager, I can show you what that does. And if I were to, for instance, take two different Wither Skeletons, they don't ordinarily fight each other, but as soon as I do this, and that then they immediately become mad at each other and start fighting, which is a very easy way to make them actually do that. And there are other such items here, but the one we're focusing on today is this one right here called Mob Army. Now this item is special because what it allows you to do is to find two or more armies of mobs and then have them all fight each other. The first thing you're going to want is some contained areas. As you can see, I just have these little areas here. I have two of them. Never mind the command blocks, never mind any of this stuff. It's just an area to contain mobs inside of. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and take whatever mobs you want and put them in the area. If I want to grab I don't know, let's say some wolves. I could grab wolves. They do need to be either hostile or neutral mobs. Passive mobs will not attack anything. But if we take these wolves, which are neutral mobs, so they will attack things, and just put a bunch of them in here, as we can see, now we have a contained area with a bunch of mobs. Now, what we actually have to do at this point is go ahead and define the area that we want to make into the army. So what you need to do is go ahead and take the mob army stick and go ahead over to an anvil and rename it to something. Something that makes sense for the team name of that army. So for instance, since this was wolves, then we'll name it wolf, like so. And that will be the name of the army when it's defined later. Then what you're going to do is go to the corners of the box and you're going to go like this, right click on the first block and then go all the way over to the other side of the box and right click on the other block. So that basically has now defined the area where the army exists. So now if we go ahead and take this item in our hand, you can see the bounding box appears so you can make sure it's the right size. But then once you're ready and you want to define your army, just simply right click in the box, not looking at a block, just in the air. And as you can see, boom, added entities in the box to Team Wolf. And if we go slash team list, as you can see, I do have quite a few teams set up, but as you can see, one of them right there is Team Wolf, which is the new one we have defined. Then what you're going to want to do is take another mob army stick and go rename it to something else. So now though, for our other team, what we could do is take it and say, make it Enderman. It doesn't really matter what it is, but we'll go ahead and name it Enderman. Now, of course, the team name does not necessarily have to match the actual mob that exists in that area, but it can be helpful to, so you remember which one's which. So now we'll go ahead and take some Enderman and chuck them all over here like so. So now we just need to put them all into a team. So same thing, we'll right click on one side of the box and then fly all the way over, right click on the other side of the box. We now have a bounding box, so if we like hit in here and then we can kind of see it through the block right there, you can see the edge of it. But now all we have to do is right click the middle, and as you can see, they immediately all become mad and try to go over. If you're wondering why they aren't just teleporting over, yeah, I am too. I don't know why they don't just teleport, but as you can see, they are definitely all angry, and the dogs are also angry, and they're all piling up right there. And so now you can go ahead and release them and watch them fight. So what I've set up is the first set of command blocks here. I've simply set up command blocks now that fill the area with air or glass, these two areas. Very simple fill command. I'm not going to show you how to do the fill command in this tutorial, but you can look up tutorials about it. You basically define a start and end point and then a block. So it's very simple, but basically this button fills that area with air, and this button fills it with glass. So if we hit remove, they come apart, and as you can see, they go and start fighting each other, and it's it's pretty cool. And as you can see, yeah, apparently the, the Endermen are definitely taking out the dogs. And now onto this other command block that I've set up, and this is just to kill all entities except the player. So if we hit that, it kills all the others. Um, the way I set this up, if you need this, is basically put your username inside where it says Minecraft or Joe right there and make sure that exclamation point is there. What essentially this is doing is it's killing everything except, that's what the exclamation point means, Minecraft or Joe. So just set whatever name you want. If you would like to set something up like that, then it will basically kill everything but you. But so far, all these command blocks have been unnecessary ones to all this. As you can see, you can set up a mob battles without any command blocks. I just recommend doing a few because it makes it a lot more fun. These command blocks up here have simply set to summon mobs. So like if I do this, it just, it's just summoning baby zombies because it makes it easier to get a bunch of them. And if you're wondering why they aren't burning, I'll show you another tool. And that is if we go over to the mob battle and take this very cool tool, armor editor, we can actually right click on any mob and see the armor item. And as you can see, 
I've equipped them all with a stone button in their head slot, which isn't normally possible, but you can do it with commands. And any head item prevents them from burning, so that's a quick tip if you ever wanted to do that. The command for it is a bit complicated, but I'll add it down in the description so you can use it yourself. So, so far all these command blocks are unnecessary, but these ones over here, while they are unnecessary, I think are very useful. And they are a bit complicated, but bear with me because this, these command blocks here is what actually makes it possible to have that scoreboard on the side. And if you're wondering how that scoreboard works, as you can see, if we have some zombies over here and I right click with this stick, you see it changes to the number of mobs in the box. And I can do the same with the other one. So as you can see, there's 25 baby zombies and 17 skeletons. All right, so to set these things up, we have two simple sets of command blocks. Now these commands are pretty complicated, but you really don't have to know how they work if you don't want to. You just kind of have to, to paste them in from the description and that's where they'll be. So the first thing you're going to need to do is actually make a new scoreboard object to store these things in. So if, wait, so to do that you're going to go slash scoreboard objectives add and then it doesn't really matter what it's called you could call it say mob counts or something like that and then after that you're going to put in dummy like that and then the display name it doesn't really matter so you can leave that out. So you're going to go ahead and run that and now if you go slash scoreboard objectives list now as you can see I've got several but one of them is mob count which is the one we just created. Then what you're going to do is go slash scoreboard objectives set display and then you're going to say sidebar then you'll put in the name of your objective so if you put in mob count then it will show mob count on the sidebar. Now I already have one on the sidebar so I'll leave it that way but the name of mine is actually zombo count but that's really displaying as scores so if you don't want it to display as the name that you gave it then what you can do is go slash scoreboard objectives modify mob count say if that's the name of yours and then you'll say display name and then you can change it to whatever you want so you can put quotation mark and then you can say like score or something like that and then that'll change the actual display name of it but after you do that you should get a sidebar that says the name of your thing that you made over there on the side then you're gonna need to take a repeating command block and set that down on the ground and then you're gonna paste this command into the command block you're going to want to replace this thing that says zombo count with the name of your objective, whatever it was. And this right here is basically the label for the score. So we're going to add two different labels, as you can see over here. We're going to add two different labels under the same score, and they're each going to have their own number associated with them. So for instance, if you want it to say skeletons over here on the scoreboard, you're going to write skeletons in here. And what this is basically doing is constantly resetting the skeleton score in zombo count to zero because what we want it to do first is set it to zero so that it won't keep growing out of control but now to actually set the thing right what we're gonna do is put a chain command block against it like this and make sure that the arrows flow across like this and then you're gonna paste this command into it which I will have labeled down in the description but as you can see it uses the exact same score right here of skeletons and also zombo count which you will replace with the name of your objective and in this case it adds one to the end because what we're actually checking for if we scroll back over here is we're actually saying execute as all entities that are on team skeleton. Now I'll tell you about that in a second, but basically as, it, as you can see it says all entities on team skeleton is essentially what this means. So if you're an entity on team skeleton, it will add one to the scoreboard as we can see over here. A little bit complicated, but you don't really need to understand it. You just need to paste it in there. Except you do, of course, have to replace things like I was saying with the objective and also this right here. This is the name of your team. As I was saying earlier, with these sticks right here, these wands that you can change the name of, whatever the name is, that is what the team is going to be named. And whatever that name you chose, that is the name you need to put in here under team instead of this. So if yours is named Warden, that needs to be Warden. If it's Skeleton, it can be Skeleton. So essentially, that's what both of these are. And a couple of extra notes are that they need to be set to always active and repeat in the first command block and the second one needs to be always active and conditional as a chain block just remember that that's how it's supposed to be and then of course we have this one which does the skeleton score and then if we jump over here this is exactly the same but it's for the baby zombies in this case everything else is identical it's just baby zombies and of course we have to scroll back this way and you can see it's on team zombie because we're not counting team skeleton anymore we're counting team zombie it can be a little hard to wrap your head around but we'll just recap so what you need to do to make it so that the scoreboard will work is take the exact configuration of my command blocks and then basically change out the parts you need. So whatever these sticks were named, then you need to put that into right here under team. One for one team, one for the other. And whatever your score objective is, that's going to be this instead of zombo count. And that is basically it. If you want to change it out, so basically if one time you want baby zombies and skeletons like mine shows, but you want to change it to wardens and iron golems, here's how to do it. What you're going to do is jump up here, and you might think it's as easy as just simply taking out Skeleton and changing that out for Warden, but we'll quickly see that all that does is add another one, but that is okay. Basically, what we're going to do is change them out on both, so make sure they're the same name on both. 
so warden and warden and then on this one if we wanted it to be iron golems for instance then we could put in iron golem and make sure there's no spaces in those either because they can't have any spaces now as you can see though we have four scores and we only need two we only need the iron golems and the wardens so what you're going to do is go slash scoreboard players reset and then basically put in whatever name you need to remove so for instance baby zombies boom it removed that score and then we'll do the same for the other one so skeletons make sure it's typed exactly right and boom so it's reset those now we have iron golem and warden so if, for instance, we took some Wardens, and I believe, I'm not sure actually which side is which, but if we were to put Wardens over here, and then use the Skeleton Stick on this side, boom, you can see the Warden account has been set to 5. Now bear in mind that obviously the name of the score does not reflect what might actually be there, so you could put Skeletons in this box, and the Warden count would still work. It would still work, it could be any set of mobs. And the name of this wand also doesn't matter, it's just a way of differentiating between the two teams. Hope you got all that. Now, of course, like I was saying, you don't need the scoreboard if you don't want it, but I think it's a very nice touch to have. But I know it's a bit complicated, so if you need any help with it, comment down below, and I'll try to help you out. But anyway, that is all I have to say about this awesome mod and configuration setup. I'll have this exact world downloaded down in the description, so you can use this world, or of course, remember, you can always set your own up as well. So anyway, uh, thanks for watching, uh, thanks for sticking around, I hope this was helpful, and I will see you next time.